A lot of our favorite childhood games were way more upsetting than they should have been. Rated E for everyone, my ass. Well, get ready to relive some trauma, like that time you came home from school and found your Tamagotchi had starved to death. Rest in peace, Dr. Fishlips. Alright, buckle up, because here's a bunch of brutal moments from your favorite childhood games. Killing Yoshi in Super Mario World. Not all Mario games are mushrooms and tanuki suits. Sometimes you gotta sacrifice adorable little dinosaurs. We all know this one, and look, we're here to validate you. It is not your fault. Killing Yoshi in Super Mario World was built into the game. You have to send that cute little dude straight to Dino Hell. We've even exploited Yoshi's death a couple times here at Dorkley. Although, to be fair, we also let him get back at Mario for his cold-blooded murder by having Yoshi power kick that plumber into a pile of old Yoshi corpses. So, you know, does that make us at Dorkley heroes? No. No, we're idiots. Miyamoto did throw in another, less common way to needlessly murder Yoshi. There's a secret exit on the cheese bridge level that you can access by riding on Yoshi and gliding under the first goal. And then you leap off Yoshi once again, as he looks up in shock and plummets into the underworld. Actually, you can also just use a cape as a parachute to get to this secret exit. It's just like a little bit harder. They gave you a choice and you still chose to kill Yoshi. You sick son of a bitch. Mew training in Earthbound. You're meditating. Take a deep breath and visualize. Your ancient and demonic ancestor coming to remove all your limbs and senses and then talk shit to your face. Wait, I am not relaxed. During Prince Pooh's Mew training, your character learns he needs to reach a higher level of training that can only be obtained through meditation. After some heavy duty crotch rope burn, you sit on top of a mountain, listen to the ominous sounds of our meditation, and receive a serious warning from our master to not proceed. We can probably just ignore that though. I'm sure it'll be fine. Wait, what's happening? Anyway, oh look, it's the spirit of my ancient lineage. I'm sure he has some good advice that he can, oh. He wants to break my legs and feed my arms to some crows. Cool. Okay, and then he wants to take my ears and my eyes and my mind. Sweet. And then this dickhead decides to just run up the score and talk some serious trash. Can you answer? Are you sad? Are you lonely? Are you scared? Do you ever think about dying? Do you remember the time you accidentally called your teacher mom in front of the whole class? And just like that, everything's fine and you've completed your training. Okay, I think I got this now. So the takeaway is that bullying works? That's terrible. Aerith dies in Final Fantasy VII. Good thing we don't get attached to lovable characters in games. It would really suck if they died. Aerith is the heart and soul of Final Fantasy VII. We rely heavily on her playful, loving nature and healing abilities. For over more than half of the game, we're lured into a false sense of security bonding with the flower girl. And then the game ends. They all open a frozen yogurt shop together and they live happily ever after. The end. Actually, that's not what happens. Sorry. We find Aerith praying at a temple under the City of the Ancients. There's a tense moment when Cloud raises his sword, and we're not sure if he'll be able to resist Sephiroth's control. Thankfully, Cloud backs off. But then we go to a cutscene, which is never good. A peaceful-looking Aerith is suddenly impaled by Sephiroth, followed by the devastation of watching Cloud hold her lifeless body in the water as the white materia falls into the depths. I'm not crying, I just... I have a polygon in my eye. Killing Toriel in Undertale. Has your sweet adoptive mom given you everything you ever wanted? Well, time to kill her. Undertale tests your morality, so there's gonna be some tough decisions, but this one's pretty messed up. When you try and leave the ruins, Toriel forces your hand to make a decision. She asks you to prove how strong you are to make sure that you can survive future hardships. After fighting for a while, she eventually gives in, so you can just go on your merry way. Sure, she goes to you after that, but you're well on your way to that pacifist route. Or you can spare her a couple dozen times until the very last second and then kill her with one blow. She looks into your eyes, smiles, and says, you really are no different than them. Not traumatizing at all. Just a ton of stuff in Majora's Mask. Name an E-rated game that has more questionable to fucked up moments than Majora's Mask. How about we start with how spooky those mask transformations were? Oh no! Ooh, 
Sorry about that. If you're familiar with the game, I know what you're hoping not to see. The monkey torture scene. That poor little monkey, strung up by his feet and dipped into a boiling cauldron for a crime he didn't even commit. They do eventually release him on the orders of the princess that he didn't kidnap, and then he somehow forgives them for trying to boil him alive. That little monkey dude is a better person than me. If it were me, there'd be a new game. Legend of Zelda, Monkey's Revenge. The messed up moments don't stop there. What about the Deku Butler's kid, whose face we see twisted into a tree with his father crying over him? Or when you walk into Pamela's house and find her mummified father, only to have her cry and protect him with her body? This isn't even to mention what happens if you mismanage time and the moon comes crashing into the planet, destroying everything and everyone. Talk about anxiety. What the hell, Majora's Mask? Knock it off! The food chain in Sim Animals. Sim animals may have taught kids a thing or two about how nature works, but it also taught kids how to be an absolute psychopath. This is the sharpest knife we have. When you're not feeding forest critters or drowning birds, you're simply pitting animals against each other as predator and prey. Look, it's the circle of life. Sometimes in nature, the bunny gets eaten by the fox. And sometimes in sim animals, the bunny gets deliberately fed to the hungry fox by the disembodied hand of some morbid eight-year-old kid. In a twist, if the predator isn't hungry, the two actually become friends. It's like Zootopia without the night howler serum. But I wouldn't be surprised if this messed up game had them both tragically die in a hang gliding accident or something. Oh no, you're my best friend. I love you. <laughs> Okay, that was a bit much. So that's our list. Which ones did we miss? Which ones messed you up as a kid? Let us know in the comments. Julia! Dr. Fishlips? Why did you let me die, Julia? I just forgot and then I had school. Oh, oh okay, no, I get it. It's, it is monotonous. It's a lot of responsibility for a kid. It's all good. Thanks for understanding. No problem. Can I borrow $35,000? What the hell? Why does everyone keep asking me for money? Thanks for watching. Check out the Dorkly Patreon. We have all this cool stuff. Bye.